So, <laughs> as you can tell, my dog has taken the seat in my armchair. He's right beside me. I think he can only see the top of his head now. But, um, so he's taking the seat in my armchair and I didn't want to move him, so I'm just taking a chair and sitting beside him and filming. So I'm glad you joined my YouTube channel again for another episode of Philatia, and you can tell this time I'm having a little nail polish on. I don't have it often, but today I do. I do. And for you to see it a little closer, I scoot forward and I show you. It's just a little light pink. So, <clears throat> for today, uh, we're going to have another lecture because last time we did have a meditation. So, let's start with a lecture. chapter see. yeah uh, it's chapter two on the virtues on the third book of Philatia so Choice of virtues. St. Augustine says well that when men are beginning to lead a devout life, they commit errors which are strictly speaking against the law of perfection, but which nevertheless are valuable as indications of future piety to which they often conduce not a little. The low groveling fear whence arises over scrupulousness in the minds of those who are but just forsaking sin is a quality not to be despised inasmuch as it is the forerunner of future purity of consciousness. But the same feeling would be blamable in those further advanced in holiness whose heart should be filled with love which will gradually banish such severe, uh, servile fear. Originally, St. Bernard was exceedingly severe and righteous towards those whom he directed, telling them when they came to him to leave their bodies and come with a spirit only. Hearing their confession, he treated them all, even the least fault, with such severity and such pressed as poor novices in perfection that instead of urging them forward, he kept them back. For they were dismayed and discouraged at being thus rudely driven up so steep and rugged a path. This was the result of the saint own ardent zeal and great purity, and zeal is assuredly a virtue. Yet in this case it became an evil, became too much. But God vouchsafed to correct it, filling St. Bernard's heart with gentleness, tenderness, and mildness. So that changing his whole system, he reproached himself bitterly with his formerly exactly severity and became so tender and forbearing that he was like St. Paul, all things to all men, that he might gain them all. So St. Paul was telling them uh, to the Romans, be a Roman, to the Gentiles, be a Gentile, to the Jews, be a Jew. Um, and so, you know, to bring the message as one of them and not um, showing themselves as um, prior or better superior to them. St. Jerome records of his beloved daughter in the faith, St. Paula, that she was not only the extravagant in her bodily mortifications, but also self-willed and persistent in the contrary to the advice of St. Epiphanes, her bishop. And further, that at the death of those she loved, she indulged in such excessive grief as to endanger her own life. It will be said, he continues, that instead of praising this holy woman, I am condemning her. But I call Jesus, her master and mine, to witness that I speak the whole truth, both good and bad, representing her as she really was, according 
as one Christian should write of another, as it to say, I write her mamra, not her panegyric, and truly her faults would be another's virtue. That is to say that St. Paul's faults and imperfections would have counted as virtues in one less holy, and indeed, there are many actions which we hold as imperfections in the perfect, which in the imperfect would pass for great virtue. It is a good sign when the legs of one recovering from sickness begin to swell, as denoting that reviving nature is throwing out that it's corrupt in the system. But on a healthy man, it would be a bad sign, indicating that nature had not strength to absorb her own superfluities. Philotea, we must esteem highly those who abound in virtues, even though mingled with imperfections, remembering that so it has been with saints. But for ourselves, we must practice all virtues faithfully and watchfully and give good heed to the wise man counsel and not rely on our own wisdom, but on that of the guides God has given us. There are some things which pass current as virtues, but are really quite otherwise, such as ecstasies, raptures, insensibilities, impossibilities, deific unions, elevations, transformations, and similar perfections, which are the subject of certain books. These promises to exalt the soul to purely intellectual contemplation, to an essential application of the spirit, and a super eminent life. But these are not virtues. They are rather the reward of those virtues or forecast of the bliss of a future existence, which are sometimes granted to men in order to kindle their longing for the perfect blessedness of paradise. But it is safer not to seek such favors, which are now ways necessary in order to serve and love God truly which should be our own aim. Neither indeed can they be obtained by labored search, since they are rather emotions than actions, which we can receive but not originate. Our aim is to become good, devout, pious men and women, and to that we must labor. Then if it should please God to give us angelic perfections, we should doubtless be good angels, but meanwhile, let us simply humbly and devoutly practice those lowly virtues, the acquisitions of which has been appointed by our Savior as our daily task, such as patience, cheerfulness, a mortified heart, humility, obedience, poverty, chastity, kindness towards our neighbor, forbearance towards his faults, diligence and holy fervor. Let me read this again because that's really important and that you get it. The virtues such as patience, cheerfulness, a mortified heart, humility, obedience, poverty, chastity, kindness towards our neighbor, forbearance towards his false diligence and holy fervor. Let us cheerfully leave preeminent graces to preeminent souls. We do not deserve so high a post in God's service. Too happy if we can obtain the humblest office in his household. Hence, he in his own good time, if he sees fit, will bid us come up higher. So we shouldn't seek the high pleasures of God, the, um, the, the sweet... Uh, consolations, maybe visions, and all these kind of things, but rather not seek that, but seek virtue, seek the practice of virtue, and then everything else will be giving, but only if it serves you right and not make you proud again. See, some people are also deceived by the devil. They receive uh, a vision from God and then they think um, they're superior to others um, and their pride grows 
And that's actually from the enemy because he can give us visions too and make us feel superior. So instead of feeling superior, if we have a vision like that, we should actually be very careful about our attitude towards um, ourselves and others because um, it might be a temptation to pride. It also might be a temptation to feel superior to others and over others. And um, that is a really, really great danger. So not to seek basically the, the hand of God who will give you something, but rather the face of God and to rather be close. Yes, Philotea, his glorious king does not reward his servants according to the dignity of their office, but according to the humility and love which, which they fulfill that appointed them. So some, for example, some uh, really great saints did not have great positions in the church or, I don't know, being a pope or having a lot of authority. Actually, it was lowly uh, nuns, for example, like Sister Faustina, uh, St. Therese, um, who was really sick, you know, who were lowlier servants who, um, you know, were given lots of graces because they had such humility. While Saul sought his father's assess, he found the kingdom of Israel. Rebekah, whilst watering Abraham's camels, became his son's bride, Ruth gleaning after her reapers and lying at Bo's feet was raised up to be his wife, undoubtedly. High pretensions are very liable to illusions, deceits, and errors, like I've said, so that some of those who would fain be angels are not really even good men, and there's more of elevation and holiness in their words and expressions than in their heart and deeds. So some sound really holy, some people, and they can like deceive you really well, but their hearts are actually rotten. It's almost like, I know you have seen a beautiful woman and you thought, wow, she looks stunning until she opened her mouth and then just the way she spoke, it was really ugly. And then all of a sudden her all in appearance wasn't as pretty anymore as you first have perceived. Nevertheless, we should never be hasty with our contempt or censor. But whilst we thank God for the exalted for favors he bestows on others, remain humbly in our own lower sphere. Lower indeed, but safer and better. More suited to our weakness and insufficiency, certain that if we walk therein humbly and faithfully, God will exalt us to real greatness. So I hope that this was really interesting to you, um, that it was a very interesting reading. I hope you learned something, not to seek uh, just the higher visions of God, but actually to lower yourself and humble yourself. And I heard, um, I don't know who it was, but if you think, uh, he's like a saint said, if you think you are humble, then you're so far from it. Actually, you're pretty proud because the truly humbly people, humble people, don't think they're humble. So that's also a thought to think about. God bless you. I wish you a beautiful day and I hope to see you again um, the week following this with another meditation from Philadelphia. And actually the last meditation we have from this book. So God bless you. See you soon again.